Let's talk about ice. Ice plays a pivotal role in Earth's climate and ocean systems. It covers about 10% of Earth's surface, or 20 million square miles. That's a lot of ice. In this video, we're going to investigate ice in a very specific context, when it's melting in a liquid. Before we do anything else, let's identify the goal for this video. After watching this video, you should be able to explain the behavior of ice in different liquids and explain how this impacts aquatic environments. In front of me, I have some colored ice cubes. I just added a little bit of food coloring in them before freezing them. And I also have three different liquids. I have pure water, I have salt water, and I have isopropyl alcohol that's rubbing alcohol. I'm going to drop an ice cube into each liquid. Then I'm going to let them melt and see what happens. Do you think the ice will do anything different in these different liquids? Take a moment to pause the video and predict what you think might happen differently when I place these ice cubes into these different liquids. Okay, so let's see what happens. Here comes the ice cubes. Here's the ice cube in water. Here's the ice cube in salt water. And here's the ice cube in isopropyl alcohol. Huh. Well, it looks like the ice cubes in fresh water and in salt water did the same thing. They're both floating on the water. The ice cube in the isopropyl alcohol sinks straight to the bottom. What does this mean? These initial observations indicate that these different liquids have different densities. The ice floats on the fresh water and on the salt water because ice is less dense than those liquids. The ice sank in the alcohol because ice must be more dense than isopropyl alcohol. Just for reference, the accepted values for these different liquids are about 1 gram per milliliter for pure water, about 1.2 grams per milliliter for salt water, and then only about 0.8 grams per milliliter for isopropyl alcohol. This means that salt water is the most dense, alcohol is the least dense, and water is right between the two. One thing I want you to think about while these ice cubes are melting is which ice cube will melt fastest, and why would that be? Take a moment to pause the video and predict which ice cube will melt fastest, and maybe why. Now I'm going to just sit here for a couple of minutes and let these melt, and then we'll check in in a little bit. Well, that's interesting. The melting ice acted totally different in all three liquids. In the pure water, it looks like the meltwater from the ice mixed completely with the rest of the liquid. It also melted a lot faster. The ice in the fresh water is almost completely melted. The ice in the salt water and in the alcohol appear a lot larger. They're melting way slower than the ice in the fresh water. In the salt water, it looks like the meltwater is stuck up here. It's not sinking into the rest of the liquid like it is with the fresh water. And in the alcohol, the meltwater stayed stuck all the way at the bottom, just like the ice cube did. Take a moment to pause the video and see if you can come up with an explanation for why the ice behaved so differently as it melted in these three different liquids. So what could be going on here? Why does the ice behave so totally different in all of these liquids? The answer revolves completely around the concept of density. 
Density is the measure of how much mass is packed into a given volume, often given as grams per milliliter. Earlier I showed you the density of each liquid, and here they are for reference. These numbers are important. It should be pretty obvious why the ice over here in the alcohol sank. The ice is more dense than the alcohol. And the fact that the meltwater remained at the bottom indicates that it too is denser than the alcohol. I'm also going to get a quick reading here with my thermometer to see how the different parts of the liquid compare. The temperature of the meltwater in the alcohol is cold, but the alcohol itself, if I raise the thermometer just a little bit, is a whole lot warmer. If we look over at the salt water, the meltwater floated on top of it. But why is that? This is really the opposite of the situation that we see with the alcohol. Over here, the fresh cold meltwater must be less dense than the salt water because it's sitting on top of it. And when I take the temperature, I see that once again, the meltwater reads about four or five degrees Celsius and the salt water itself is quite a bit warmer. This is a little bit backwards from what we might expect. Aren't warmer things supposed to float on top? Normally, warmer things do float as long as we're talking about the same medium. For instance, a hot air balloon floats because the air inside is hotter and therefore less dense than the surrounding cold air. Same substance, different temperature, therefore different density. What we find happening in the salt water is that the salt water is more dense than the meltwater even though it's also warmer. The ice acted completely different in the fresh water. The ice melted faster here, plus the meltwater mixed thoroughly with the rest of the liquid. A temperature reading shows a pretty equal distribution of temperatures all throughout the liquid. What on earth happened here? So in the fresh water, the ice melted a lot faster and it also mixed with the rest of the liquid. These two observations are related. In this case, when the ice melts, both its meltwater and the surrounding liquid are fresh, but the meltwater is a lot colder. This is like the opposite of the hot air balloon that I mentioned earlier. The cold fluid is denser than the surrounding freshwater liquid, so it sinks. As the cold meltwater falls away from the ice cube, it exposes the ice cube to the warmer water underneath. The ice then melts even faster. Notice that there was plenty of movement going on here. That results in mixing. And that's why we saw an even temperature throughout the entire beaker of the freshwater. Differences in temperature resulted in differences in density, and this resulted in the movement of the liquids. This type of fluid movement driven by temperature differences is called convection. The behavior of ice in different bodies of water has significant impact. We saw that in the saltwater beaker, the meltwater from the ice remained on top because it was less dense than the saltwater. This is also the case in the polar oceans. Glaciers and icebergs at the poles are constantly melting, especially during the warm summer months. This cold, fresh meltwater results in surface waters that are colder and fresher because the meltwater is less dense than the salty ocean water. As we descend deeper into the polar ocean, the water becomes warmer and saltier because this water is denser and stays near the bottom. Bodies of fresh water are also impacted by melting ice. Lakes in temperate latitudes freeze over in the winter. Then in spring, the ice melts. This is normal and natural, but this seasonal rhythm has life and death consequences for local ecosystems. Remember what happened in our freshwater beaker when the ice melted. The cold, fresh meltwater sank and caused mixing in the beaker. This happens in lakes too. When the ice on a freshwater lake melts in spring, the cold, dense freshwater sinks to the bottom of the lake. 
This draws oxygen-rich water down to the lake bottom and allows minerals and nutrients to mix thoroughly in the rest of the lake. This is called spring turnover. If there's no mixing, this is bad for freshwater aquatic life. A lake that doesn't mix becomes stagnant, and some parts could even become anoxic, or deprived of oxygen. So ice is very important. Whether you're talking about a saltwater ocean or a freshwater lake, melting ice has a major impact on aquatic environments. Sometimes ice even impacts the health of an ecosystem, the plants and animals in that area. Let's revisit the goal of this video. After watching this video, you should be able to explain the behavior of ice in different liquids and explain how this impacts aquatic environments. If you can't do that, go back and watch the parts of the video that you didn't understand. Until next time, remember, you can learn anything.